What is up, captains and cadets? So this week's recap is going to solely be on the Alice Brew. I'm not too sure what happened, but our CEO, the captain, showed up, Michael Wagner, and all of a sudden the whole thing turned into like a town hall or something. There were so many cool things that were said. We learned a lot. Let's get into it. I'm coming at you from my vacation from a little cabin up near the Appalachian Trail in the great state of Maine. I'm way up north up in the mountains. It's pretty cool up here. But let's get into the Atlas Brew. So the first thing we're going to go into is Josea pretty much opened it up and he just talks about how the whole entire dream of the Gallia Expanse and Star Atlas is going to just unfold in this game Sage Labs. Let's listen. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about Sage Labs and what you guys can expect. When I saw the presentation for Sage Labs, when I saw the gameplay that we were going to give you guys, it blew my mind. And basically the reason for that is that Sage Labs is the manifestation of our white paper economics. It's the first time where we see, we see the ephemeral dream of how the universe of Star Atlas comes together, but inside a gaming protocol. What's happening in Sage Labs is, is we are unveiling the universe of Star Atlas. So there will be sectors in Sage Labs, and all of those sectors are real places inside the Star Atlas galaxy. So for example, you guys will know the Ulster sectors, you know their names, you see the planets that live within that, those star systems. You guys will be able to travel around them. I'm not sure that if in the release of that, uh, of Sage Labs, we'll have all the names of every single planet, but the star systems, the bases, the star bases, and most of the grand vision of our universe, it will be there. So now, uh, if you are an Oni, you see the, the star system where your, your character is coming from. If you're a MUD, you learn of the, of the many star systems in the MUD safe zones. You guys will learn a lot about the Star Atlas universe. And this, this makes my, my penguin bones tremble. You know, because this is like the world is coming to life. There's a little caveat that I must make here because I'm not talking about, I'm talking about the game mechanics and the UI, as you guys know, is not the main focus of this release. But this allows us to understand the world of Stratos, the universe that is Gaia Expanse. And this, this is super thrilling for me, and especially because this lore environment is built upon a very sophisticated and interesting economy. Uh, this is no secret for everyone, but Sage Labs is a game of icons. It's pure game theory associated with the Star Atlas assets and levels of complexity that we have been building since our white paper, since our economic paper. So when you get there, when you join, when you spawn in one of the homeworlds, let's say like the Neono system for the Onis, you guys will be able to make many different choices of how to behave and how to engage with not only uh, the star systems, not only with the asteroids, the minerals that can be harvested, but you also see what other players are doing because those guys, they'll be mining and going through the galaxy just like yourselves. What gets me excited the most is that everyone will be playing a game on how to make the best of their Sage Labs experience. So for example, you can focus on only harvesting raw resources. You have your whole fleet dedicated to going to an asteroid and go mining, or you can just buy things directly from the marketplace and focus on being on the side of crafting stuff. You can go for the golden tickets. You can go for, oh man, I, oh, I almost leaked something that I shouldn't, oh, but there will be, there will be lots. Then a little bit extra from Dominic and Santi. Basically, Sage Labs is the on-chain game mechanics of Sage Starbased, and it basically activates the economy. It has minimal UI, but it activates the economy and it, and it tackles the on-chain game mechanics. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. The main thing behind this is the grand test of the Star Atlas economy the blockchain programs, and just all that coming to life in kind of like an old game style. So. All right. And then Michael Wagner pops in and he talks about what Sage is going to look like and also about the golden ticket. <laughs> Being super cautious not to blow the scope so we can just get this thing shipped. But um, a decision was made to use the Sage UI kit. So it's all going to look like 
um, essentially the interface that you interacted with during escape velocity, not with the map and not with the movements, but uh, there's a broad UI kit applied um, that uses the Sage theme. So I, I think it's going to be more impressive than we've let on so far. Uh, but yeah, the team's actually really psyched, all full steam ahead um, uh, moving forward with the development of this. But I can tell you guys, I'm all in on golden tickets. Like all my ships are going to be producing and crafting golden tickets. Golden tickets will be a craftable recipe that requires inputs such as components. So you can make the decision in the decision tree at that point, whether or not you want to keep the tick or you want to keep the components, you want to sell the components, uh, you want to redeem the components for uh, some other formula that allows you to claim uh, assets with a guarantee, or you can uh, use those components in a formula for the golden tickets, which then gets you entered into this weekly raffle, this weekly on-chain drawing that we're working through right now. And it's, like I said, it's a $1.5 million promotion that we're running. Uh, the plan right now is actually eight weeks. So there's a um, approximately a $300,000 loot pool for fixed um, uh, exchanges, and then there's also the you know $150,000 per week in loot being distributed. So uh, I'm I'm super excited about this this golden ticket concept. We are going to provide a bit of time in advance to start to collect your golden tickets, so you you'll be able to craft them on day one. But the the raffle process will not start for you know at the risk of sounding cliche four to six weeks. We're probably giving it four weeks before we actually kick it off. Now let's talk about saving up those golden tickets and what type of loot we might get. So build up build up that ticket balance. The tickets are one-time use, but it is optional when you enter them into the raffle. So it doesn't matter when you craft them. It, it matters when you submit them to the actual drawing. But if you don't get selected, you don't get those tickets back. They just get burned, and then it rolls forward to the next week. So there's a little bit of game theory here, too, in deciding when you want to add your tickets to the raffle. Obviously, if there's fewer people in the raffle, you have a better probability of getting selected and, and getting some of that loot. We'll, we'll produce the loot table for the coming week, at least. Yeah, we might have the whole thing published in advance, but um, we'll probably want some room to modify that three times as well. So I think, you know, a couple of days in advance of the raffle, we'll let, let people know what's in that uh, particular drawing. Part. But we're going to get some, uh, we will have some <laughs> cool stuff in there. Uh, and it's going to be a, a pretty wide asset set that's included in the loot table. Not only uh, ships, but claim stakes and CSS land plots. Um, We'll look at releasing some some of the uh, ships or vehicles that were available through uh, the start sequence sale last year, where you you know purchasing a CSS land plot, you got uh, bonused with uh, various ships like the Max Hog, for example. So we'll probably introduce some more of those. Those have never been sold before, but um, we'll include a few of those. You could probably look forward to the Fimble Mamba X being included uh, in there as a first time drop. Actually, that's never gone out before. So. I'm really excited about it. I think it's going to be a quite a cool uh, contest and, and promotion that we're running for the, this initial release of Sage. And uh, I'm also extremely excited about the, the new Starpath referral system that's coming online, aligned with all of this. Uh, much better reward rates for people that are participating in the program, but also a path to earn golden tickets through making referrals when people are purchasing on either the secondary or on the primary markets. So it's all, it's all coming together really nicely for um, uh, a solid collective launch in a couple of weeks. Yeah. All right, and then Josea asks Michael about how the components are gonna work in Sage Labs and the future of Sage games. And Michael, one thing that I saw people asking, the components that we are crafting for Sage Labs, they will be usable in the future as well, right? On the other versions of Sage for star bases and things like that, right? Yeah, that, that is the plan right now. I know there's some reservation on the econ side because we're just worried about you know getting it right. And if we we ha we have to work with a lot of assumptions right now in things like production rates. So most likely, uh, this, I hope this doesn't discourage anyone, but most likely the the quantities that you're seeing being produced are on the conservative side because it's easier for us to to ramp up production than it is to pull back once assets are already distributed. Um, nevertheless, it's all going to kind of balance out with the rest of the promotion and the um, and the ability to claim these other assets that are in the guaranteed loot pool. But uh, the idea is that all of the components will carry forward. So when we get to, call, you know, call it the V0 with combat included in the subsequent release, then you, you would be able to use all of those components which go into crafting or constructing star bases and establishing your, your stronghold in any sector in space. Man, this adds another layer of very interesting game theory for Sage Labs, guys. If you know, you know. Yeah, man. well, you have, so, you have so many options. I think that's what's going to be really interesting about this release is, uh, you know, again, it's either produce, and, like, produce R4 and consume it yourself or sell that to other people. It's produce components um, that you can use to redeem for guaranteed loot, or uh, you can hold it, or you can sell it for so to someone else who wants to use it in one of those formulas, the, you know, the golden ticket concept, which has all of these um, kind of potential implications for players. You could also just craft tickets and sell those to other players. Those are going to be tradable in the marketplace as well. So uh, there's a lot of avenues to revenue generation 
we're, we're also looking at how we can tie in Atlas earnings to this as well. There's probably a path, but again, being conservative on on the econ design for now. But you know, the idea that you could produce all you have to do is produce components, and then there's a guaranteed buyer of those, which is effectively the emission curve, buying the components and exchanging that for Atlas for you, so you could earn Atlas. Atlas will be included in the raffle. What I'm thinking right now, and this won't be every week, but probably the top Atlas raffle prize will be 5.6 million Atlas, which gives you enough to lock in the Atlas locker and get that um, tier four Atlas locker. Uh, benefits. All right. And then Captain Swag talks about how this whole entire thing is going to bring in new Star Atlas fans. The, the things that we have lining up for this month, the core gameplay product with the economic simulation deployment, I think that's very, very powerful. We're talking the, the play to earn mechanics are coming to life here in full force. Um, we have the referral system uh, through Buddy Link. We have the MoonPay integration. We have some other partnerships that we're working through that will be announced during this month. But uh, we really want to go out and start to recruit new users. Like user acquisition is big for us in this. And I've had a number of conversations over the last um, 10 days or so, uh, two weeks, with various large guilds that are interested in engaging in this, uh, as well as different communities. So I think this is, you know, this, uh, I've often talked about the, the player demographic profile across Star Atlas being three different um, subsets, if you will. And one of those is the mainstream gamer. This is where the flagship Star Atlas Unreal product will really be attractive. But we have time, some time before you know we hit that product delivery that can attract the mainstream. But in the meantime, you also have uh, just crypto speculators and traders. Uh, and then you have this play to earn segment of the community. And these are people that care a lot about being able to earn through gameplay mechanics. Uh, these oftentimes are somewhat more crypto native, or at least familiar with the concept of play to earn. Um, and also very often come from emerging markets. So Southeast Asia, we have something planned there. Some parts of South America, we have some things planned there as well. And you know, I think this this opportunity is a big one for that particular market segment. If we look at at program interactions or specifically uh, faction fleet, faction claim interactions, it it's maybe approximately 10,000 uh, unique wallet interactions uh, per day with us. So you could call that a, a an estimate of daily active users, 10,000 people. But I, I want to see us get over you know 30,000, 30 to 40,000 with this release and going into the end of the year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. It's also a good that. moment also for the community. Like it's with, with Starpath B2, like it's not only us just having to go out there and do, do the marketing and everything, but like the community can have huge rewards from it as well. And what we're giving you guys as a product is something that is quote unquote easy to market. Yeah. I love that there is a chance for the community also to get huge rewards from it, huge rewards. This I just found absolutely crazy. We're going to talk about how we're going to use Atlas for just about everything if we feel like it. And you touched at something that I think is very important for community to know as well. Atlas will play a massive role in Sage Labs, right? In terms of uh, activity that gen demands Atlas, right? Like crafting and other things like that. It will, it will cost some Atlas, right? Yeah, there's there's technically uh, three Atlas syncs. So one of them is on crafting. Uh, one of them is on ship respawning. And then the last one is uh, we've got a a program that we're also looking to deploy to deploy alongside. Uh, Sage Labs, which is, uh, we're, we're just calling it Atlas Fee Payer, but it effectively allows you to only hold Atlas. You don't need to hold Sol. All of your transaction fees are paid in Atlas. We serve as a proxy in between. We're actually paying the Sol uh, transaction cost on your behalf, but you, you pay the Atlas then to us. And, and um, uh, we'll share some more details on that, uh, exactly how that that's going massive. to work. Yeah. That is actually massive. So we don't need Sol anymore. Yeah, in theory, to the extent that you're operating exclusively within the Star Atlas ecosystem, you're not interacting with any other uh, DeFi programs or you know Solana projects. Uh, in our case, you only need Atlas to cover all of your transaction fees on the Solana network. I mean, that's huge. <laughs> that, that's massive. Jeez. So, Man. and I'll just leave. You know, one more big thing that's coming this Make month it. is the is <laughs> Let's the moon. Go. Is the MoonPay integration. So we are going to move forward with MoonPay. Unfortunately, uh, Atlas and Polis are not traded on an exchange that is supported by MoonPay cash on ramping options right now. So we, you won't have the ability to buy Atlas uh, through MoonPay, but it is a quick USDC onboarding and a quick Solana wallet creation onboarding. And then of course, with um, with spending either of those, if a user were to buy some Sol, they could exchange that for Atlas. And then once they get through that process, then they don't need the Sol anymore within the Starless ecosystem. But then we got into the whole Buddy Link revenue shares. So if you refer someone to Star Atlas and they buy something from Automata, then you will receive a small amount of revenue. The fees from Starpath B2, like that is something that is huge as well, because you will get the fees from the people you refer. The rewards are very strong. And I'm also just in the kind of final steps of refining the econ of the uh, call it like the revenue share or the, the commission, if you will. We have a couple of different routes we can go. It, it will be in the neighborhood of like 25% uh, 
on both primary market sales. We are paying a rev share on the secondary market transactions, but it is only based on the royalty fee that is paid. And so it'd be like 25% of the 4% that goes to us. Obviously, we can't come out of pocket when there's transactions that are happening on a peer-to-peer -peer basis. Uh, we can't lose money on all of those transactions because it would also be pretty easy to exploit with wash trading. But nevertheless, once all of that secondary inventory is absorbed, which in my opinion will not take long because a few of you guys have seen my comments in the econ channel, but we're only talking about $1.4 million of total inventory that is on market below origination price right now. And this is out of $175 million in assets that have been sold through time. So, you know, 1%, less than 1% of the total assets that have been sold are available on the market right now below origination price. So through the referral system, people come in, they can get some deals because other people are selling them at less than origination, but we absorb all of that. And then it's all essentially primary market sales and the simplest example is, you know, you refer someone, they buy a $10,000 ship, that's $2,500 in your pocket. And the other um, side of this, I said there's two different ways we could go. Uh, the rate on the referrer could be slightly higher, uh, or we can go the route of offering some incentive to the referee, the person who clicked on the referral link, and they could get like 10% off on uh, their, their primary market purchase as well. So we can kind of incentivize both sides, and I think that's the route we'll take. But 25% to the referrer, 10% discount to the referee. Hold on, hold on. So if you buy, let's say you refer someone, and that person that you referred buys the Titan ship for $5 million, mm -hmm. you get 25% of that. Yeah, you'd get $1.25 million. All right, all right, ladies and gentlemen. And now we're going to talk about the Buddy Link revenue shares and the golden ticket. Man, that golden ticket, right? You are thinking about linking this with the golden tickets as well, right? So yeah. this would be yeah. another layer of incentives for StarPath. Yeah, that's right. Um, had a good good conversation with Econ about this, and we're, we're relatively close to dialed in on uh, how the golden tickets would be distributed, but it will be based on uh, total transaction volume. Uh, so when you hit various thresholds, then you will also receive a golden ticket. Um, this is where I'm going to hold back a little bit, but I will say it is going to be substantially easier, I guess, or more productive to actually craft golden tickets than the transaction value in rewarding uh, golden tickets through uh, through the referral systems it's to, to the um, magnitude of like 40x uh, easier to craft these than, than to use the referral system. But nevertheless, if you're using it, these are all bonus tickets. Once again, you can take the tickets and put them in into the raffle yourself. You could turn around and sell those and it's a little bonus. So there's a lot going on here. I'm, I This is why I'm so excited for this month because it's just like we are lined up for an incredible amount of releases. And then finally, man, is it your hobby to build little mini games? Is it your hobby to build big games? Do you want it to be your hobby one day to build a game? Well, this is... Let's hear what Michael has to say about sharing the dev tools. Again, we're, we, we are really trying to under-promise on what's coming with the Sage Labs UI. Uh, what's really cool about this, too, is we are looking to publish the IDL. So if you're a developer, you can actually build your own front end and use all of our core gameplay mechanics. And uh, I, I'm, I'm strongly considering including all of the WebGL, uh, the Lost Pixel ship assets from Sage, in the build library. So you'd be able to use those to the extent that they're officially referencing the real on-chain assets. So if somebody can build a game, they can use all of the WebGL assets as long as it's using the real Stylus SFTs or NFTs. It's, it just adds more utility to all of the ships that you own, whether you're playing Sage Labs or you're playing something that Athia builds uh, because you have fun and uh, you're essentially all using the same real asset, which is very cool. Holy crap. Man, imagine that. You dropped a bomb. I mean, just, just imagine playing 100 different titles all with the same asset that you hold. You know, this is the potential of composability. This is what we're building for. So, and, and we're providing all of those core mechanics too. Some of the most impactful games of all times were, were a result of players' ability to modify an, an engine that they were working in. We're building a platform that allows for that easy modification in UGC. So you guys, like sure, it takes some, some development skills to be able to do it, but we're providing the platform, all the tools and a core game and beautiful IP that is kind of the, the trap, <laughs> the mousetrap uh, to attract the initial people in, but then your product has more, um, has a better value proposition because you have this captive audience that you're working with. I, I don't want people to feel like we're not building the Unreal Engine game. I, I, we actually have an incredibly impressive team still over there, 46 people directly working on, on the Unreal Engine product. Uh, I misquoted that when I made the comment previously, but 46 people on a development team for a AAA product is still a substantial amount of manpower. So uh, I'm feeling super good about what we have on that side. That's where we do want to have a greater degree of control over asset usage um, and the value of that IP specifically. But I think for the Lost Pixel WebGLS, that's getting those into the hands of people uh, is a good idea. I don't want to say we're not going to build Sage, but Sage Labs is 
going to be pretty damn cool. And if you guys are equipped with all of the tools to build something more immersive, it might even be a better option for us. I'm going to wait to see how that all, all pans out. Like, we still have the intention of building Sage to the extent that there's not something better already on the market. But if Aphia comes along or Coexist comes along and, and builds a better Sage product before we can, well, we'll just drive people to that because it's still all of your ship assets and all of your game assets from uh, the Star Atlas ecosystem. The power of the blockchain. All right, guys, that's all I got for you. Um, we just had an awesome shout out at the beginning of the Atlas Brew from Santi, Dominic, and Josea. So we just wanted to say thank you. Thank you. We love you guys all. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Please like and subscribe. I'm Woo. very thankful. <laughs> all right. <laughs>